The Grand Canyon is a natural wonder, featuring a serene and relaxing environment. However, this relaxing environment has recently been discovered to hold mysteries. What are these mysteries? Continue watching this video to find out. The Grand Canyon is a steep-sided gorge carved by the Colorado River, and there are 11 Native American tribes associated with the Grand Canyon. Among these tribes is the Havasupai tribe. The Havasupai tribe had lived in the high desert land and red rocks of the Grand Canyon for over eight centuries, even before the canyon was designated a national park. Of all the original Native American tribes, the Havasupai are the only ones still living in the region of the canyon to this day. The designation of the Grand Canyon as a national park came with many problems for the people of the Havasupai tribe. This tribe lived in a land measuring 650,000 hectares, about the size of Delaware, a state in the US. Upon designation as a national park in February 1919, they had to give up almost all of their land, leaving them with 210 hectares of land. A councilwoman in the Havasupai tribe, Ophelia Watahomijikolis, said they lost a large area of their migration. Their land was continually being used for maintenance by the National Park Service. They tried to find this and gain restoration of their land using the US judicial system, but it yielded few results. This continued throughout the 20th century, and their breakthrough didn't come until 1975, when they regained about 75,000 hectares of their ancestral land. This was made possible when the Grand Canyon National Park Enlargement Act was passed. The portion return sits southwest of the Grand Canyon National Park. The councilwoman spoke on the partnership, noting that the process took a long time of constant collaboration and idea sharing, preventing anger and tension between the tribe and the US government. She believes their ancestral land in the canyon is sacred ground and should be treated as such, pleading with the millions of tourists visiting every year to protect and respect it as the tribe members do. She expressed her joy at having the tourists around to enjoy the relaxing beauty and scenery of the park, and she asked that they remember that it's also the home of the tribesmen. The 277-mile-long canyon was carved by the Colorado River about 5 to 6 million years ago while establishing its course in the area, and for thousands of years, the Native Americans have been living in the area and its many caves. On the orders of Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, a Spanish explorer and conquistador, Captain Garcia Lopez de Cardenas, and some other Spanish explorers were the first Europeans who traveled to the Grand Canyon in September 1540. President Theodore Roosevelt established the Grand Canyon as a games preserve in 1906, and after passing the Antiquities Act of 1906 into law, he redesignated the canyon as the U.S. National Monument. President Woodrow Wilson established it as the U.S. National Park in 1919. This natural landmark stands 446 kilometers long, 29 kilometers wide, and 1.85 kilometers deep as one of the largest canyons in the world. The rocklets discovered in the canyon are dated over millions of years, enabling geologists to study them over time. The rocks found range from the Vishnu Basement rocks, about 2 billion years old, to the Kaibab limestone found on the rim, which is 270 million years old. The Vishnu Schist is a metamorphic layer formed by plutonic masses under the crust and sediments from an eroded mountain chain. The former volcanic ocean chain was then united when the lava solidified. The Trail of Time was installed to educate visitors on the timeline of the formation of the rocks in the Grand Canyon, as not everyone can hike the Grand Canyon. The dark-colored rocks in the base of the canyon were formed from the collision of volcanic rocks under high pressure and temperature. The oldest of these rocks in the canyon is the Elves Chasm Nace, dated 1.8 billion years old. However, a gap of about 1 billion years, ranging from 1.75 billion years to 1.25 billion years, was found in the canyon's geological history. This signifies that there were no deposits on them for an extended period. The canyon story continues between 1.25 billion years and 730 million years ago, when fresh sediments were deposited, forming the Grand Canyon supergroup. In these formations, the earliest evidence of life forms was found, 
a layer of limestone containing algae fossils. The sediments flowed to the bottom of the ocean, stayed there, and were cemented together to form the layers making up the canyon. Over time, the upper rock layers moved, shifted, and settled into their permanent positions. The supergroup layers also broke down into different fragments by natural methods and became tilted. Finally, erosion degraded them, and a new sea eventually sprung over them. At the bottom of the new sea, sediments began to settle again, and it was concluded that mineral fragments from the 60-mile formation should be analyzed. A geologist, Carl Karlstrom, dated detrital zircons using radiometric dating methods to establish the maximum age for deposition. The formations had never been dated previously, and upon dating, was found to range between 509 to 520 million years old, against the previous estimate of the geologist dating it to 650 million years old. After the mineral study, it was revealed that the 60-mile formation did not belong to the Grand Canyon supergroup, but could be considered a part of the Tonto group, a younger group of rocks that have formed as a result of the rise in sea level and the forward and backward movement of water across the region. As new and more accurate dating methods were established and new dates were obtained, geologist Carl Karlstrom and his group of geologists could more easily decide the formation dates of other layers on top of the 60-mile formation and the flooding of the sea. Sediments continued to pile and accumulate. The layers deposited between 508 million years ago and 270 million years ago to form two-thirds of the upper canyon walls. The rocks deposited included sandstones of various colors, limestones, and shales. These layers provide images of reddish-brown mountains that come to your head when you think of the Grand Canyon. Fossils are prevalent in this area, and the most common ones are tiny sea creatures like brachiopods, bryozoans, crinoids, and coral. Therefore, we can deduce that a warm and shallow sea occupied the region during these formations. While visiting the Grand Canyon in 1857, John Strong Newbury, the first geologist to visit the Grand Canyon, referred to the layers as the most splendid exposure of stratified rocks in the world. The Kaibab limestone formation provides the final touch to the canyon, a cream-colored rock formation. The formation, which is 270 million years old, is found on the rim near the lip of the canyon. All the rock layers that make up the canyon have been built over billions of years, and the cutting through by the river would help bring them into plain view. The uplift of the region and the rising plateau favored active erosion, steepening the river's path to cut through the rock formations. Two plates from the Earth's crust collided and began to push up the Rocky Mountains. As a result, the Four Corners region in the southwestern United States also began to rise. The region, also known as the Colorado Plateau, rose from a bit close to the sea level to thousands of feet above sea level. The depth of the Grand Canyon results from the river's cutting activity. Still, its width is caused by rain, wind, temperature, and erosion, helped by the quick wear of soft rocks, which steadily enlarge the canyon. Cutting the mile-deep Grand Canyon by the Colorado River is a relatively recent geologic event that began not more than six million years ago. It started when the river, sourced from torrents of water off the central Rocky Mountains in Colorado, began following its present course. The Colorado River's velocity and large volume, coupled with the significant amounts of mud, sand, and gravel it carries swiftly downstream, account for the astonishing cutting capacity. During the formation of the Grand Canyons, smaller canyons, caves, buttes, and mesas were also formed by other smaller rivers. Some parts of the account involving the history of the canyon formation are extensively debated by different geologists. For example, different geologists believe in slightly different timelines for the incision of the canyon. While some believe the canyon is about 70 million years old due to the time of exposure of the rock formation in some areas, some believe it was much later than 70 million years. Carl Karlström tried to reach a middle ground by saying even if some parts of the canyon were older than others, it's been confirmed that the river didn't connect as a whole and started flowing until about 6 million years ago. It wasn't until about 10,000 years ago that people began to settle in and around the canyon. 
They farmed and hunted animals like the Shasta Sloth and birds like the Teratornis Meriami, which are now extinct. People living in the canyon recently found ways to alleviate their boredom or find something fun. They made animal figurines from split twigs, which could be dated to about 4,000 years ago. About 1,000 years ago, evidence showed that people farmed crops along the bottom of the canyon. They made caves by hollowing out the canyon walls to store their harvested farm produce. Some dug caves still exist at the Grand Canyon today. Astonishing discoveries have been discovered recently at the canyon, shining new light on the Grand Canyon National Park. The weather in the Grand Canyon varies according to the elevation. At the same time, some rims are high enough to receive snowfall in winter. The weather in the canyon is generally dry, and they have a semi-arid climate. Now, what discoveries have been made at the Grand Canyon? Very recently, a rare weather pattern caused the Grand Canyon to be filled with a sea of fog. And a few days later, two species of scorpions were discovered. These life forms are previously an undiscovered species. Admirers and enthusiasts have tagged them as pseudoscorpions. They were first discovered between 2005 and 2007, but they were dismissed as unremarkable until a recent discovery again began speculations about the cave that these two similar species were uncovered at. Their similarity suggests an extensive food chain beyond what researchers previously thought could exist in this small cave. In addition, these two species' ability to evolve and exist alongside each other has sparked a newfound interest in the ecosystem since they share a food source. The physical appearance of these newly discovered creatures is very distinct from that of most scorpions. One of the differences, and probably the most noticeable, is that the pseudoscorpions don't have the long, pointed tails characterized by scorpions to deliver poison with. Instead, they have deadly barbs on their claws, allowing them to paralyze their mark before swallowing it. Another difference in the pseudoscorpions is the absence of eyes. This is believed to be an evolutionary result of their dark ecosystem. Theories are being proposed about these creatures being likely descended from desert-dwelling scorpions. Still, when their predecessors began taking refuge in caves, searching for safety, they adapted to their new environment however hostile. They feed primarily on tiny invertebrates and insects, who in turn eat the feces of crickets and the fungus that grows on them. To aid their movement, they're found in a symbiotic relationship with more giant creatures. The new pseudoscorpions latch onto bigger animals to convey them, allowing them to spread to areas that would have been inaccessible to them. In return for the favor, they feed on pests like ticks, mites, and fleas that perch on the larger animal during their journey. Viewing these creatures with the naked eye, they were very similar until further studies and investigations were carried out, and it can be seen that they were from different species. They were both later named after two cave research advocates. The discovery of the new species could be regarded as astonishing. What do you feel about these discoveries? Share your thoughts with us in the comments, and don't forget to click the like button. Also, subscribe to this channel to access more videos like this.